Creativity and Learning, Helping Students Think More, Study Better, and Improve Grades, video number three. My name's Lisa Jones Bromfield. I'm a nurse, I've been a special educator, and I'm a musician, and I've written a CD of songs called Groovin' in the Hippocampus, Songs to Learn Anatomy and Physiology by. More importantly to you, I'm a good student, and as a good student, I had an opportunity to help some of my fellow nursing students who were struggling a bit. In doing this, I discovered some things, some differences between the way that good students and struggling students study and go about learning. I'd like to share some of those things with you to help you become a better student. So are they smarter? Ever wonder why some students study less and get better grades? Think it all has to do with genes, brain size, or luck? I don't think so. I think there are some successful actions that help people do well in school. So this video is about what good students do. You can become a better student. If you saw video number two, you know I love outlines. Outlines help you organize information as well as see what information is related and how it's related. Here's an outline I made about things good students do. Some of them are technical things you can mimic. Some require a little confidence, a little faith that what you have to say and what you think are valuable. Some people naturally do the things good students do. Some people are natural athletes. That doesn't mean that anyone can't become a better athlete if they try, train, and learn. Try, train, and learn to become a better student. What good students do? Good students organize information. They relate terms and facts within a hierarchy. They relate terms and facts to other terms and facts. And they group and relate terms and facts by similarities, by differences, by function, within a field of study, intraconnections, or between fields of study, interconnections. Good students question what they hear, see, and read. They ask internal questions as they read, see, and hear. They ask questions during class, either aloud or by writing ideas down. They ask questions while reading. They encounter a forgotten fact while reading and look it up before continuing. They realize they don't understand what they are reading and back up. They give themselves time to think about connections inspired by the reading. They show, good students show interest in a topic. They increase their interest in a topic by asking questions while material is presented, either in their head or out loud. And they increase interest in a topic by pretending to be interested until they actually are. They force interest in a topic by looking for something in the material that they can relate to. Good students allow time for studying, as looking things up and making new connections does take time. Good students are willing to take risks by asking questions in class, by allowing themselves to make odd or extraordinary connections, and by assuming that their input and thoughts are valuable. So let's go over that in a little more depth. Good students organize information. They relate terms and facts within a hierarchy. They relate terms and facts to other terms and facts, and they can group and relate terms and facts by similarities, by differences, by function, within a field of study, and between fields of study. These actions of good students refer to understanding what things are examples of, which groups they fit into, and how they can be compared and contrasted. For example, the femur and the humerus have something in common. They are both examples of long bones. Long bones is a category within the group bones, which is an example of a supportive connective tissue. Do you know what a connective tissue does? Can you name another connective tissue? What is a tissue? Answering these questions is easier if you organize information using outlines and if you ask questions as you study, as you listen, and as you read. There are many ways that you can relate the above information to other information about bodies, such as what bones do these two bones connect to? What are bones made of? And how is a long bone different from a sesamoid bone? So as you're reading, you're reading about a femur and a humerus. If you come across a term you don't understand, stop and think about it. Or just ask yourself, how are they alike? How are they different? Good students question what they hear, see, and read. They ask internal questions as they read, see, and hear. By internal, I just mean in their heads. You have to actively listen to someone to come up with questions about what they are saying. In other words, you have to pay attention. By asking questions during class, either aloud or by writing ideas down. You write it down, and if you can't ask right then, ask after class. 
ask questions while you're reading. If you encounter a forgotten fact while reading, look it up before continuing, especially if not knowing that word or that fact makes it hard to understand the rest of the reading. Don't waste time reading what you can't understand. Good students realize they don't understand what they're reading and back up. Again, don't waste time reading if you're not getting anything out of it. It happens to everybody. You get tired, you're focusing on something else, you're worried about something, you're hungry, you're paying attention to your snack. Truly understanding 10 pages will do you more good than glancing over 15 pages. Good students give themselves time to think about connections inspired by the reading. Face facts. Learning takes time and good grades take time. If your time is limited, you will still benefit from and be more interested by generating real understanding than you will by looking over more material in a way that doesn't really stick with you in the long run. Good students show interest in a topic. They increase their interest in a topic by asking questions while material is presented, again, either in their head or out loud, by pretending to be interested until they are. You can practice this. When someone is telling you about something you're not interested in, listen as hard as you can and ask questions. Ask any questions that have to do with what they're talking about. It's kind of interesting, but you might just find yourself actually interested after a few questions. You will certainly be appreciated by the speaker. And you know professors are people too. They have a more favorable opinion of students who look at them and ask questions during class. They can tell you are trying, you're paying attention. For good students force interest in a topic by looking for something in the material that they can relate to. Find something about the topic you can relate to. Seriously, if you think about the things you like to do with your body and the wonderful things your body does for you, you can find something of interest in anatomy and physiology. Good students allow time for studying, as looking things up and making new connections takes time. We've already covered this. You do have to put some time into learning, whether it's in school or on a new job or getting to know a love interest or a new friend. Good students are willing to take risks by asking questions in class, by allowing themselves to make odd or extraordinary connections without worrying if people are going to laugh or think they're weird, by assuming that their input and thoughts are valuable. Think of yourself as a good student. Assume that your input and thoughts are valuable, because they are. Everyone has a unique perspective on life. Everyone makes unique connections and learns in a unique fashion. If you don't think there is much value in your thoughts, are you likely to explore them? If this is true of you, if you don't think there is much value in your thoughts, cut yourself some slack. Try to treat yourself the way you'd treat your best friend. Give yourself a chance. Don't worry about what the rest of the class or even what your best friend thinks. Allow yourself to think and explore your own wild and wonderful thoughts. In the process, you'll find class more interesting and remember things better, and I bet your grades will improve as well. Heck, you might even be a happier person if someone, you, has a little faith in you. So go forth and study smart. Have fun and be interested. Good luck, even though luck has very little to do with it. Try these tactics and let me know how you're doing. You can reach me at my webpage shown on the screen. Happy learning.